in the core set Duelist Nexus as part of the big 25th anniversary celebration of the Yu-Gi-Oh! official card game's existence, the game got its first new monster type in six years. Illusion. This marks Illusion's OCG and TCG debut, as it was originally in a bunch of Game Boy and Game Boy Advanced era Yu-Gi-Oh! video games as its own type. Now when you look at Illusion's aesthetic, it does look very spellcaster-ish and does maybe feel a little bit redundant. However, I would argue that the real purpose of Illusion is to separate it from the existing massive spellcaster card pool as a way to balance and create things with a spellcaster-like aesthetic but not being tied to having to balance around this massive spellcaster pool. A very similar comparison is Worm and Dragon because both aesthetically are very similar to each other but Worm being its own type allows it to do things that you could not do if you tried to integrate it into the greater dragon support pool. And as part of this first wave of Illusion support, many of those monsters from those older video games got printed with new card art and modern effects and all synergizing to work together. This was also combined with a remake of Yugi's old Phantom Beast monsters. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Burfamet, and Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast. But describing this archetype that way is kind of demeaning because it really doesn't exemplify the sort of fantastic and fun gameplay that this deck and this strategy can provide. But as strong as these cards are, it definitely was obvious even on day one of the Japanese reveal that this deck wasn't even a deck really. It just was an engine and so you had to pair it up with something else in order to get a full-fledged deck. And so what do you do? You combine it with one of the other powerful modern fusion archetypes, Branded. The brand aspect of this deck really transforms the gameplay in my opinion because it adds a level of consistency and just a diversity of gameplay options that the core engine by itself was just severely lacking. Now, there are other Chimera variants out there that have seen certain amounts of success, uh, but this video isn't about Runa Chimera now, is it? So why exactly play the Chimera deck over any other deck that exists? What I think makes Chimera cool is that it takes that original idea of fusion summoning that was just so inherently bad for card advantage of two monsters on either your hand or your field plus a polymerization to summon a fusion monster and it actually makes it legitimately viable by just cranking up the power level of cards and giving you resources like almost every time you fusion summon. A lot of modern fusion archetypes from all the way back to Shadal to Branded Fusion to Tier Limit all try to circumvent this in different kinds of ways whether they just straight up fuse from decks so you don't have to worry about losing any card advantage. This deck really commits to having multiple materials in your hand plus a fusion spell. The first time in a turn you fusion summon, you get all of the resources that you spent summoning that fusion monster back, and you can fusion summon again. The deck can just generate an absurd amount of card advantage. There's some times where you play this deck and you have a full board and six cards in hand. In addition, a lot of the interaction that this deck provides with your opponent is just kind of unconventional in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! That there are just some decks that are not particularly good at dealing with the kinds of interactions that this deck puts up. It's almost kind of like a control deck, as weird as that sounds. There's a lot of one-for-one -one interactions that you can do and you're really trying to wear your opponent out of resources. The sort of inevitability that this deck provides on future turns is that you're just able to just constantly grab stuff no matter what, no matter whose turn it is or what. That you can just have a Chimera Fusion and materials in your hand and just keep going, keep going, keep going. And with the release of Age of Overlord, the deck got two new cards, Master Tao the Enchanter and Burfamet, the Mythical King of Phantom Beasts. Both of these cards really open up the deck's playstyle, and to me is what really makes this deck great, that prior to those cards, the deck was fine, but it did have kind of a linear 
game plan that you, you can only really do certain things. But with these two cards, there's a lot more lines. There's a lot more stuff that you can do with the deck. There's a lot more flexibility of things that you can do with the side deck that I think playing it post Age of Overlord is the most fun way of playing the deck. This Brandon Chimera deck historically has not been super strong in any of the formats that it's been playable in, but it has been a decent contender, sitting somewhere between tiers two and three. It tops plenty of regional events, and it even has a per small percentage of YCS top cut wins. So the deck is definitely viable. As far as I'm aware, there's not really any of like the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh superstars that have been working on trying to refine this deck. Guys like Jesse Cotton or Joshua Schmidt or Pack, that's sort of like ultimate tier of players. They're not really working on or even playing this deck at all. So really, I would argue that this deck has been built and refined by the people. And hey, I almost topped the regional playing this deck, and I've been playing at a very high power local OTS with various regional winners, uh, getting tons and tons of games off of them. So who better to make a Brandon Chimera guide than me? So this video will be a reasonably comprehensive guide on Brandon Chimera. A lot of the deck building choices, ratios, uh, reasons why you play cards, combo lines, uh, side decking options, things like that. However, doing any sort of remotely in-depth matchup breakdown, uh, considering how diverse the format has been the entire time this deck has existed, is basically impossible. I obviously think that matchup knowledge is important and stuff, but the problem is that the Yu-Gi-Oh card game just moves so fast, and in order to get this video done in a reasonable time frame, I have to draw from my own personal experiences playing the deck and not just labbing out every single deck that I could play against. And I don't do YouTube as my full-time job, so this is probably the best you're gonna get. Now, part of the reason for the sense of urgency as to why I want to get this video out is because, well, I obviously want people to play this deck, and I think it's a cool deck, and I want more people to learn it. But also, by the time Legacy of Destruction comes out in the TCG, this is not going to be a Brandon Chimera deck anymore. It's just going to be like a Chimera Illusion Pile deck. At least according to OCG tournament results I've seen so far. All right, now that all this context and talking head stuff is done, let's actually get to the good stuff. This deck list I have on screen is the list that I've been using for the most part since the release of Age of Overlord. It was slowly sculpted by myself with some inputs from friends from my local OTS. I also want to give a huge shout out to JT from my local OTS for recommending this deck to me and inadvertently getting this video made. Outside of staples like hand traps, board bakers, etc., this deck primarily is split between your two major engines the Chimera engine and the Branded engine. One important thing to note is that while the Branded engine can let you get to the Chimera side of your deck, that doesn't work the other way around. You really just have to hopefully hard draw into your Branded Fusion or your Searchers. There's no way in the Chimera engine to grab Branded Fusion in case you need it. Let's talk about the main deck first because it's the easiest to explain and it's the natural starting point of everything. Now you have five main deck monsters related to your Chimera engine. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws, a level four beast that on summon lets you search either a level five fiend or Chimera fusion. And when Gazelle's use is fusion material and is sent to the graveyard, it lets you add an illusion type monster from your deck to your hand. Now Gazelle here can theoretically search any level five fiend in the game. However, you're really only going to be searching for one specific search target, which is the next monster I'm going to talk about. Now, the ratio for this card is weird because you want to be running three of these, not necessarily because you want to be actually summoning this monster, but rather as sort of a soft to maybe hard garnet for our next monster here. Here. Next up is Big Wing Birthmet, a dark level five fiend that on summon can search a level four beast and or a Chimera Fusion, but locks you into Fusion Summons for the rest of this turn. Again, much like Gazelle, it can theoretically search any level four beast in the game, but 99% of the time, Burfamet is going to be searching Gazelle. And its effect when used as fusion material and sent to the graveyard is targeting an illusion monster in your grave and special summoning it. This card is really powerful and gets you a decent amount of card advantage, but the problem is that is a extremely hard garnet given that it is a level five monster and you can't 
really normal summon it. So play two, your one of in deck, and then your spare copy in case you hard draw one of them. And since Burfamet can add up to two cards, that's why you play Gazelle at three despite being kind of a garnet itself that you want to get that search off as often as possible for card advantage reasons but also for the longer grind game also note that both these monsters secondary fuse effects can be gained no matter which player's turn it is or what fusion spell they are used with. There are some particular corner cases with stuff like super polymerization that can make a massive difference in tempo. These next two monsters have secondary graveyard and on-field effects that allow them to do things if a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast is on field. Yes, the vanilla monster, which three of your fusion monsters have effects to get treated as. This is kind of the gimmick of the deck, as reaching your fusion bosses with these cards in Graveyard adds an additional one to two interruptions to your end board. Mirror Sword Knight is a Light's level four illusion that allows you as a quick effect to tribute itself for cost to special summon a monster that mentions Chimera Fusion from your deck. This card being a quick effect allows you to use it during the opponent's turn as well, allowing some amount of flexibility to play around certain cards or to better optimize what materials you want to fuse on field or being able to grab stuff in your hand. Sword Knight's second effect lets you banish it from failed or graveyard as cost to negate a monster effect while you control flying mythical beast this is an extremely strong card for the deck it's your key normal summon in the deck and you play three of them this is not negotiable Kernful Coddle is a wind level four illusion that lets it discard itself to search a monster that mentions Chimera Fusion, which 99% of the time is going to be Mirror Sword Knight. In the combo parts later in this video, you can replace any combo where you need a Mirror Sword Knight in hand and extend it by one step with a Coddle search. The second effect lets it banish itself from field or graveyard to negate and destroy a card effect that targets while a flying mythical beast is on the field. You won't be playing three Coddle since it's essentially extra copies of Mirror Sword Knight, but even if you already hard draw the Mirror Sword Knight, you can still discard this anyways for the targeting protection once you get the fusion up. And your last main deck illusion is Master Tao the Chanter, a level three Earth illusion. Master Tao, upon being sent to the graveyard, lets you special summon an illusion monster, except Master Tao, from your graveyard to the field and locks you from special summoning non illusion monsters from your graveyard for the rest of the turn. You usually aren't summoning this, you're either searching it off of Gazelle's fuse effect or sending it directly from deck to graveyard. So you really only need one copy of this. Also note with all the illusions is that they cannot be destroyed by battle or destroy other monsters by battle. Meaning that sometimes sitting on a defense position illusion monster can save you life points or force out opponent's resources that they normally wouldn't have to spend. And then we get to the linchpin quick play spell card of the deck, Chimera Fusion. Letting you fusion summon a monster during the main phase and requires a beast or a fiend monster as material. The second effect lets you either add itself back to hand if you control a monster named Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast or banish itself from your graveyard to special summon the original Gazelle and Burfmet to your field. The banish effect, I've literally never seen used even once, so don't worry about that one. The add back to hand effect is the one that you care about. One thing to note about Chimera Fusion is that the second effect is a hard once per turn, while the actual fusion effect is not once per turn. Meaning that you can fuse with Chimera Fusion however many times you want in a turn as long as you have that many copies. There are certain scenarios in which that you can just brute force your way through negation by your opponent by just activating multiple Chimera Fusions. It being a quick play allows you to do so many things, obviously using it on your opponent's turn is the primary thing, but it also can be handy in dodging a lot of targeted negation. Sometimes the best move in a starting hand your opponent tries to target and negate your big wing Burfamet or something is to use a Chimera Fusion if you have the materials in hand to dodge that in Imperm. It's this specific dodge functionality why I specifically play three Chimera Fusions because I do sometimes want to hard draw one in certain scenarios, but there are other deck lists out there that only play two Chimera Fusions. I think that's perfectly fine as well. And this last card will not searchable or even in that Chimera engine itself is meant to bolster that side of the deck. So I'm putting it here anyways, Fusion Armament. Fusion Armament lets you special summon out a monster from your extra deck listed as fusion material on a fusion monster. That summon's monster's effects are negated. However, unlike a lot of these other one card fusion summons like Instant or Ready Fusion, the monster isn't destroyed at the end of your turn. So the idea here is that you want to reveal Chimera the Illusion Beast in your extra deck 
to special summon the original vanilla Chimera of the Flying Mythical Beasts as one of the first actions you take in your turn. And since the Flying Mythical Beast is already on your field, that means when you discard your Cornfield Coddle to search your Mirror Sword Knight, you already have targeting negation live when you start going into Mirror Sword Knight. In addition, it keeps another copy of Flying Mythical Beast on field, so if your opponent remains the main fusion that you went and spent all these resources summoning, your Mirror Sword Knight and your Cornfield Coddles in Graveyard are still active. I know that this is definitely a weird card, and I've had people at my locals in particular raise their eyebrows or even laugh when I play this card, but it's worked out like almost all the time I've used it. I personally played this card at two copies because I do want to hard draw it and see it sometimes, but not necessarily all the time. Because at three copies, I find that it just makes bad hands worse, but at two copies, it makes okay hands much better. Now, as for the branded side of your deck, Branded Fusion is the foundation of this deck that lets the two engines work together. It can act as both your one card starter if you don't have any access to your illusion lineup, but also as an additional form of interaction. With nothing else, you can activate a single Branded Fusion and send Gazelle plus Allbaz to the graveyard to summon Rinbrum the Striking Dragon. Gazelle's fuse effect will trigger in graveyard, letting you add an illusion monster to your hand. From there, you can proceed to your normal one card combo Chimera line. The only difference being that you cannot add off of the Gazelle fuse effect since you already used it. You get your main combo going and you get an additional layer of disruption via Rinbrum. Since this card is essentially your seventh, eighth, and ninth copies of Mirror Sword Knight, play Branded Fusion at three. There's also the mandatory slot for your one Red Eyes Dark Dragoon fusion material. Now you definitely can play the original Vanilla Dark Magician in this slot. However, from my personal testing, I found the downside of hard drawing the Garnet Dark Magician to really outweigh the main upside, which is for the burn and pop effect. It has virtually no synergy with the Chimera side. It's a spellcaster, not a beast fiend or illusion. So really the only fusion synergy that it has is that it's a dark monster. Now, fortunately, we don't have to play Vanilla Dark Magician given the existence of fusion substitutes. The main one that I see in many other people's Branded Chimera deck lists is Light Hex Seal Fusion. So you can Branded Fusion into Albion and then banish the materials for Dragoon without having to discard for Lubellion. However, my preferred fusion substitute is this card right here, Versago the Destroyer, a dark level three fiend. But since Versago is dark, it does come with the downside of using Lubellion instead, which you have to discard a card for cost to go into drag. However, the reason why I play this card is that if you do hard draw the card, it's not a hard Garnet, or at least it's not as bad of a Garnet as Vanilla Dark Magician. And since Versago is a fiend type monster and Chimera Fusion requires a beast or a fiend type, that means that if you have access to other parts of your Chimera engine in your hand, plus this, it is not a hard brick. It can still advance your game plan, further your board state. Plus, this is also a fusion substitute monster. That means you can also substitute it for Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast in some niche scenarios. There's also the small Aluber package in my particular build of two branded opening and one Aluber to search your branded fusion. Really, the main reasons why you play opening is one, more consistent fusion access, which is essentially more consistent Mirror Sword Knight access. Secondly, it lets you get another body to use for fusion material. And thirdly, the branded opening can come up in certain scenarios to protect your higher level fusions, making your board just a little bit more sticky and a little bit more annoying. But the downside of this package is that Eluber is the worst Garnet in my build that you can hard draw into. Yes, even worse than Versago. Kind of similar to a reason why I don't even play Dark Magician. Eluber doesn't really have any synergy with any of your Chimera stuff. And given this deck is so normal summon reliant, trying to get the full value out of the Aluber you hard draw is basically impossible because you're going to save it for your mere Sword Knight. The action deck for Brandon Chimera is just so obscenely tight. While they are a handful of fusions that you make almost every game, the amount of different scenarios that you need to account for really balloons the extra deck size. There's one flex spot maybe in my particular build, given the vanilla Chimera fusion armament package, but that's really about it. Even some of your less useful fusion monsters like Mud Dragon, Garura, Dragos de Palea that are just super poly targets in your extra deck, you do sometimes want to hard make for yourself as well. Let's start off with the card that this entire deck revolves around, Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts. 
A level 6 Wind Beast Fusion Monster that requires a Beast and a Fiend as material. Its first effect is on Fusion Summon. It can rip a card from your opponent's hand during the end phase. And for its second effect, when it's in the graveyard during your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, it can special summon back a Beast, Fiend, or Illusion type monster. This card I think is pretty good, but it's not obscenely strong. I know that's a weird assessment to make about a card that is essentially a hand rip, but in the era of this card's release, 2023 and 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh! is so obscenely high power that it sometimes feels like the hand rip doesn't even matter given the existence of all these crazy one card starters. And the second effect is extremely useful, not just in reviving anything your opponent outs and sends to the graveyard, but also as a sort of recovery aspect, letting you revive cards like Big Wing Burfamet. This card is so foundational to the deck and really, really important to the overall game plan that I feel like you have to at least play two copies at bare minimum. Next up is Burfamet, the mythical king of Phantom Beasts, or what I like to call him to not confuse him with Big Winged is Fusion Burfamet. It's a level six Wind Fiend Fusion that requires as material any two of a Beast, Fiend, or Illusion type monsters with different types from each other. Its first effect on Fusion Summon can send a Beast, Fiend, or Illusion type monster from your deck to the graveyard. And the second effect is that when it's in graveyard during your opponent's turn as a quick effect, it can special summon back any Beast, Fiend, or Illusion monster that is banished. Now the actual deck send part I will get into a little bit later in this video. Now I don't know exactly how intentional this is, but Fusion Burfamet's graveyard effect, a special back from Banish, creates this sort of small recursive engine that makes it much more annoying from your opponent to try to out any of your flying mythical beasts. Since you can banish your Chimera from your graveyard in order to special something out, you can then use the King in your graveyard to special back that Chimera. So if your opponent is trying to play through Mirror Sword Knights and Cordonfield Coddles by just removing stuff from your field, then you could just special summon it back anyways. You only really need to play one of these, the deck send effect you're only going to be using once a game realistically anyways. As your final official Chimera addition to the extra deck is Chimera the Illusion Beast. A level 8 Dark Illusion Fusion Monster that requires one Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast plus one or more Illusion Monsters as material. Now Illusion Beast's main effect lets you attack monsters up to the number of fusion materials used for its fusion summon. And when it battles a monster, it negates the monster's effects at the end of the damage step, changes its attack to zero, and allows Illusion Beast to attack again in a row. Combined with the standard illusion clause of not being able to be destroyed by battle or destroy the monster it battles with, this creates a crazy OTK machine that can slam into almost any monster and get game from it. Kind of the average OTK setup is that you want to have illusion beast made with three materials plus another large-ish monster over 1900 attack. You hit into an opponent's monster over and over again with Illusion Beast, changing its attack to zero and getting in to 6200 damage and have your final monster make the killing blow. And that negation can matter sometimes in certain scenarios. I remember playing against a regional champion at my OTS who was playing normal branded and had a Dragoon on his field. And I knew that I couldn't OTK him that turn, but what I did was I had a Fenrir and Illusion Beast on my field, hit into his Dragoon twice for a bunch of damage, and then banished it face down with the Fenrir. You only need one copy of this card. Do not play anymore. You do not need more. Guardian Chimera is a dark level nine beast fusion monster. that requires three monsters with different names. And in its effect text, requires those materials have to be one from hand and one from field at minimum. If fused by a spell effect specifically, it then allows you to non-target destroy cards on field or draw cards based on where you used fusion material from your field or your hand respectively. Guardian Chimera was already pretty great and regular branded, and it's for the same reason here. So some of your Chimera core replace themselves being used as material, Guardian Chimera can result in some ridiculously insane tempo swings. I see some other decklists play two Guardian Chimera. I understand the reasoning why, especially for the grind game, but I personally only play just one. Of course, with the branded engine comes your standard package of Lubellion, Albion, Mirror Jade, Rimbrum, and Dragoon, each of which you play at one copy. Lubellion in this deck can sometimes lead to very funny moments in the late game stages. Okay, but seriously, Lubellion does actually add a little bit of extra flexibility 
and Recursion. If you get spared to use a Branded Fusion, Lebellion can fuse anything from your Field, Grave, or Banishment, including the Chimera stuff. I've had this happen in real games, plural, where I Lebellion fused into an Illusion Beast since I couldn't get into it any other way, and won the game off of that play. Mirror Jade's purpose here is not as a boss monster like in regular branded, but more as a specific form of removal, not really covered by the rest of your extra deck lineup, being non-targeting monster banish. I've not had Mirror Jade come up super often, but certain decks like Fire King or anything that triggers on destruction, this gets around. Dragoon is particularly important because without it, this deck has no in-engine way of negating spell or trap card specifically. It's also the hardest thing to out on a Chimera board Board, but once it is removed, you can't really recur it like the rest of maybe the branded engine or even the chimera side of the deck. So your opponent really is going to have to save their strongest removal for the Dragoon. And to round things out here, here's a couple of miscellaneous cards that you can play in this deck that really couldn't fit into any other category. Obviously, Cashira Fenrir is a good card in general, but in branded chimera specifically, it provides some unique upsides compared to just special summing it out as another point of interaction. Firstly, the Fenrir adding itself to hand allows you to grab more fusion material for a potential fusion summon. I cannot tell you how many times that I've had to use the Fenrir in hand that I searched off of the Fenrir on field as material to fuse into a Guardian Chimera. The second thing is more of a corner case, but in particularly Bricky Hands, we draw both Big Wing Burfamet plus Fenrir. Special summoning out Fenrir can let you tribute summon for Big Winged in order to get your Gazelle Chimera Fusion search off. The edge and package, while interesting, I am personally not a fan of in this deck. And here's the reason. Firstly, the deck already has so many pieces that you want to be searching and adding to your hand that having an additional like five pieces to try to search and fuse and stuff and just hope that you don't draw, I think really messes up the sort of delicate balance that this deck achieves. Secondly, it makes you more susceptible to playing into Droll and Lockbird, which I will talk a little bit about later. And thirdly, whatever benefits that the engine provides in giving you additional fusion summons is offset by just how many dead draws you get from having this engine. All right, now that we've got the main deck and the extra deck done, I wanna talk about the side deck a little bit, specifically patterns and some specific key side deck cards. Now with my particular Branded Chimera build, I have some siding patterns that involve removing some portion of the main engine, which definitely does sound a bit risky, but I don't think has really worked out super terribly for me. The first thing that I usually do is remove the Branded Opening and the Aluber for games two and three. These cards are good for playing on the draw in game one if I don't know what my opponent is playing, but I'd rather have hand traps and board breakers if I know what my opponent is playing. Sometimes I will side out the third Chimera Fusion for a side deck card. Sometimes I don't want to hard draw into a fusion depending on what deck I'm playing against or if I'm going first or second. Fusion Armament can be a good candidate to get sided out too, depending on the deck you're playing against. Targeting protection may be the least of your worries. I really try not to side out some of the Garnets like Master Tao or Versago going first in case I draw a hand that can use them. I cannot tell you how many times I sided out Tao and I drew the exact hand that would have been strengthened by sending a towel from deck to graveyard. Going second is a different story, given that I might hard draw into them, I may side them out. I usually side out Versago first, given that in this deck, Dragoon going second isn't a super strong play in my opinion. Since Fusion Burfamet allows you to send any Beast, Fiend, or Illusion type monster from your deck to the graveyard on summon, it really allows the deck to play some interesting side deck options, or what I personally like to call funny floodgates. Do your standard Mirror Sword Knight combo to go into a Chimera. Next, you need to use your added back Chimera Fusion to fuse the Chimera plus a Fiend slash Illusion into Fusion Burfamet. Use the version Burfamet to dump the funny floodgate of choice from your deck, and on your opponent's turn, use Chimera's effect to revive that monster to your field. I will say that it is pretty resource intensive to go for this line specifically, since you're using the Chimera Fusion that you would normally set, and you're hoping that the Floodgate can totally stop your opponent and not just be super easily outed. 
as of right now, there's really only five of these funny floodgates that are worth playing, in my opinion. King Tiger Wangu is a level four earth beast that destroys monsters with 1400 or less attack on their summon. Meaning that decks reliant on low attack monsters like Purely or Sprite are going to have a much tougher time trying to establish a board to play against you. Invader of Darkness is a level eight dark fiend that makes it so your opponent cannot activate quick play spell cards. It's great into decks like Runic, heavily reliant on quick play spells. In addition, this card makes the difference in a Branded Chimera Mirror match, as summoning this card before your Branded Chimera opponent can even get into their main phase stops them from being able to use Chimera Fusion at all. End of Anubis is a level six fiends that stops either player from being able to activate any card effects in the graveyard. This card is obviously very good against any deck that relies on graveyard effect triggers a lot, things like tier limit, things like unchained, etc. Now this is definitely a very two-sided floodgate given that it turns off both your sword knight and your coddle. However, your opponent removing the Anubis without also removing any fusion monsters named Flying Mythical Beast turns all that interaction back on. Barrier Statue of the Abyss is a dark level four fiend that stops any monsters from being special summoned aside from dark monsters. Now this Barrier Statue is definitely the worst one objectively given that dark monsters are the most prevalent in the game, but I promise you that this actually does have a decent amount of utility. Certain decks like Cash Tira or anything that really doesn't go into dark monsters that often, this just absolutely cripples their ability to play. Now the obvious way that you out the barrier statue is just a normal summon a monster, hit over it, and then get into main phase two. But given that your interruption like Predator Plane, Dragos to Palea, and Guardian Chimera are dark, you are not as affected by the floodgate. So if your opponent tries to hit in with their normal summon, go end of main phase, fuse into a Guardian Chimera, pop their normal summon, and your opponent's just forced to pass turn if they don't have anything else. Chaos Hunter is a dark level seven fiend monster that stops your opponent from banishing cards altogether. Now, fortunately, this one is not two-sided like End of Anubis because that still allows you to use things like your Mirror Sword Knight, your Coddles, your Chimera, your Fusion Burfamets on your opponent's turn as well. It's really good against decks that rely on banishing a lot like Cash Tira or Rescue Ace. Now, one thing to note is that aside from King Tiger Wangu, these cards, Floodgate effects do not start chain links, meaning that your opponent is very limited in what they can do once those monsters hit the board. All these monsters being dark also means that they're super susceptible to beast deals as well. And since all of these cards are either beast or fiend type, they work with Chimera Fusion, so you can theoretically just fuse them off if you want to turn off any two-sided floodgate that affects you as well on your next turn. I know I've talked about cards and garnets and engines and ratios and all that. Let's actually get to some real combos here. This first combo is going to be the most basic standard one. It involves a singular normal summon. It's the one that you're going to be doing the most often. Normal summon Mirror Sword Knight uses effect to special summon Big Wing Burfamet from deck. Big Wing effect to search Gazelle and Chimera Fusion. Use the Chimera Fusion to fuse both together to summon Chimera. Now let's start building our chain here. Chain link one gazelle to search an illusion monster from deck. Chain link two big wing to special summon back the mirror sword knight from graveyard. And then chain link three chimera to rip one card from your opponent's hand during the end phase. We order the chain links in this way so chimera goes last so the gazelle and the burfamet don't get hit by a stray hand trap or anything. Activate the effect of chimera fusion, add it back to your hand, and set it. Off of this one singular Mirror Sword Knight, you rip a card from your opponent's hand, monster negation for on-field effects, target negation if you have a cornfield coddle in graveyard, and you can still fuse again with up to three fusion materials. Here's a more complicated two-card combo that I learned from MSTTV. It lets you go super plus and is the reason why you play Tao the Chanter. It requires a gazelle and a Mirror Sword Knight in hand to start. Now you want to normal summon the gazelle instead of the Sword Knight like you normally do and use the Gazelle's effect to grab Chimera Fusion, and then Fuge into Fusion Burfamet. Building out our Chain Links here, you go Chain Link 1 Fusion Burfamet to send from deck, Chain Link 2 Gazelle to Chain Block and grab another Illusion from deck. Off of the Fusion Burfamet, you send Master Tau. Tau will trigger in the graveyard to special back the Mirror Sword Knight that you used as material. And since we haven't used Mirror Sword Knight's effect yet, you contribute the Sword Knight to special out Big Winged and get your search. Congratulations, you now have two Chimera Fusions that you can access for any amount of disruption. 
you don't get the hand rip effect off this combo, but you still do have the option to go into Chimera with the fusion materials that you'll have remaining left once this combo is over. Here's a three card combo you can do that doesn't use up your normal summon and can kind of play around infinite and permanence or targeted negation a little. If you draw Big Winged plus Sword Knight plus Chimera Fusion, you can just straight fuse into Fusion Burfamet. Chain Link 1, Big Wing targets Sword Knight to special back, chain blocked by Fusion Burfamet dump effect as Chain Link 2. Now what you're dumping off the Burfamet here doesn't really matter. And so you tribute the Mirror Sword Knight to special summon your second Burfamet from deck, activate its effects, grab Chimera Fusion and Gazelle. You didn't have to commit to your normal summon, so you're free to normal summon anything. You could normal summon the Gazelle to get a third Chimera Fusion in your grip. Uh, you could normal summon an Aluber. You could even normal summon Fallen of Volbaz if you're playing into an established board. So some of these options become more or less viable playing into an established board, but generally you're going to be doing this kind of thing as well, trying to crack your opponent's board. I want to stop here and talk about some commonly used cards that your opponent will try to use against you in order to stop your game plan. Just ways to play around it. Let's start with some hand traps first. The most commonly used and obvious hand trap that could likely derail your whole plan is Ash Blossom. If you have a really bad hand, an Ash Blossom on a branded fusion attempting to grab a Mirror Sword Knight from deck will end your turn. And an Ash on a Mirror Sword Knight special from deck stops your resource accumulation dead in its tracks unless you hard drew something already. It's not to say that you can't play around Ash Blossom, but it requires a certain level of hand in order to play around it. In my personal experience, if you have both a Branded Fusion and access to Mirror Sword Knight in your hand, Branded Fusion tends to be the one that you activate first to try to bait out an Ash Blossom from your opponent, as weird as that sounds. It's kind of a funky quirk of both engines that both of them have key pieces that die to Ash Blossom specifically, that that sort of parallel weakness actually becomes a strength of the deck. The deck. Drawing Lockbird is weird against this deck because it very much depends on the hand that if you try to brand infusion or cornfield coddle to try to grab a mirror sword knight that you are entirely screwed but on the other hand if you just normal summon mirror sword knight go into the burfamet and grab your two cards and you get drolled it's not the worst position to be in Especially with the end phase rip of Chimera, your opponent will be starting their next turn with four cards in hand, and you have at least an okay board set up. Infinite permanents are similar cards like Effect Veiler or Ghost Warner that do targeted on-field monster negation are particular choke points for the Chimera deck, given that Big Wing Burfamet has to resolve in order to grab the Chimera Fusion and the Gazelle. This is part of the reason why this deck plays so many ways to out effect negation targeting specifically. DD Crow I'm only bringing up here because I need to make people aware that you are very susceptible to it, given that your Chimera Fusion you have to add back to your hand from your graveyard, meaning that a lot of the recursion that you can do, whether it's for using it on your next turn if you're going first or fusing multiple times to try to crack a board going second, really does like kill your ability to just play the game. Ah, uh, good old Dimension Shifter. Uh, I think it should be pretty obvious that this card eats you alive since all of your effects only specifically trigger in the graveyard. Really the best thing you could do when a shifter is dropped on you is either A, have a call by the grave, or B, hope that you draw Brand of Fusion and sit on a Dragoon and just try to wait it out until your next turn. All right, so I know that Maxi is banned in the TCG, but if for some reason any Master Duel player is watching this video for some reason, this is for you. This deck plays okay, under Maxi, your standard combo actually preys into it pretty okay, but any other combo or maybe using a branded fusion to get your combo started, uh, not great. Now for your standard combo, if your opponent hasn't preemptively used Maxi during the standby phase or something, you just normal summon your Mirror Sword Knight. If they try to Maxi you, you can obviously just quick effect summon the big winged and get your search off there and from there you only really need one more summon in the chimera you obviously don't have to special summon back the illusion from graveyard it's optional you'll give your opponent one draw but the chimera will rip the one card from your opponent's hand during the end phase anyways so the maxi effectively didn't do anything and that's kind of your standard board anyways the worst thing about this board is that you're not gonna have material on field to go into a fusion but you could play into that a little bit by giving your opponent all right next up let's talk about board breakers or things that be very careful of any 
mass background removal cards like Lightning Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster. Having multiple Chimera Fusion set and losing them to Duster absolutely sucks and turns off so many options and ways of interacting. I'm not exactly sure how you play around it, but given that these activate in the main phase, you can just shotgun all of your Chimera Fusions at once. And if your opponent has quick play spell trap removal that they can activate outside of the main phase, given that your Chimera Fusions can only activate during the main phase, there's really no way of playing around it. While Super Polymerization is a great tool for this deck to use, it can also be used to break your boards as well. To be honest, there's not really a great way to play around it. Your deck just inherently plays into Super Poly being a fusion-based deck. Theoretically, if you're playing a mirror match or something and they had the stuff in the extra deck, they could just fuse away your field into their own monsters. I actually once had a ninja player who had so much free space in their extra deck, he super polyed me to make his own Chimera. I will say that Brandon Chimera is not the worst at playing into existing super poly targets, given that all of your leftover monsters on the end of your turn are all different attributes and types from each other, but it's not the best at playing around it consciously either. Dark Ruin Amor feels very scary to get hit with, but I have played through a decent amount of them with not much issue. Given that you can quick play fuse into new monsters that aren't negated, if your opponent doesn't entirely clear your board and set up a good defense when they pass back to you, they are really screwed. Really the scariest Dark Ruler No More's happen with any of your boards involving Dragoon, since turning off Dragoon's negation opens up so many more board breakers that this deck is really, really vulnerable to. Typhon is really weird against this deck because a large amount of your boards, it doesn't do anything against given it's under the 3000 attack threshold, but you still need to actively think about it and account for it. The main thing Typhon's going to be used for is to try to out your Dragoon or your Mirror Jade. Typhon also turns off your Guardian Chimera if you try to go into it with it up, but I've personally never been in a scenario where I had enough resources to go into a Guardian Chimera while my opponent had a Typhon up. Evenly Match is definitely a very scary card and is part of the reason why I even play Dragoon in the first place to deal with. But even if you don't have Dragoon, the deck can somewhat play through Evenly Match even without negation. If your opponent tries to declare End of Main, I just try to shotgun all of my quick effects and Chimera Fusions to end on a Chimera for a hand rip. You want all those cards to get used and end up in your graveyard rather than banished face down so you could use them for main phase two and on your next turn. Now, when the evenly mashed hits you, you want to keep the Chimera as your last card since that keeps the Smear Sword Knight and Corfield Coddle graveyard effects online. And for the rest of the turn after your opponent resolves evenly, if you have another Chimera in grave, you can quick effect banish it to revive anything in your graveyard, like say a big wing birth mat, so you can grab resources so you can get going on your next turn. If you play pretty good, your opponent will have lost up to two cards from Chimera hand rips on different turns. One from your going first turn, and then a second one during the evenly matched, and then they lost the evenly matched itself. Now, obviously that figure doesn't really take into account like anything relative to board state. Your opponent could build a really, really strong board that you cannot beat over, and they still could lose three cards. I really only put Soul Release here because it is a somewhat popular side deck option against post Phantom Nightmare Fire King Snake Eye, but it's also really effective against you too, so I might as well cover it. Target five cards from your opponent's graveyard and banish them. Since a lot of your interaction is based in your graveyard and a lot of your resources you want to recycle from your graveyard, uh, this is very bad for you if this resolves. Even the Branded Engine suffers from this a little bit. Sometimes if you have a Rin Brumming graveyard and an Allbaz, you want to use it as interruption. But if your opponent plays into your board a little bit and then activates Soul Release, you just lost like three to four pieces of interaction alone. While Dimensional Barrier is not a board breaker, it's not a hand trap either. So I just decided to put it in this section because where else am I gonna put it? D Barrier definitely destroys this deck, especially if you're not playing anything outside of fusion monsters in this version of the deck. You can somewhat play through D Barrier given you can set the Chimera Fusion the turn you search it and just flip it on your opponent's turn. But that really lowers the value that you get out of it since you aren't getting any of that first turn resource recursion, let alone adding it back to your hand to reset. All right, this first game here is going to be against Goblins. So let's just go for a kind of a standard combo line here. Uh, grab Cornfield Coddle and get drolled. Okay, not terrible. So 
Uh, we've got one set, and um, yeah, the hand rope didn't really do anything. They go terror top here. Church up, search target, tom board. Use my own droll. Didn't seem to matter. I try to Chimera Fusion into Mirror Jade. Just try to get them off of Xyz and oh, Underworld Goddess. Oh, thank goodness I went into Mirror Jade. Oh, thank goodness. And due to some end phase shenanigans, uh, we're going to summon back the Burphomet without having to worry about the Underworld Goddess. So that's good. Uh, draw the Mirror Sword. I didn't have to even search for it. Go for Burphomet. Search. Okay, we get drolled again. That's fine. We'll go for another rip here. Summon back the Mirror Sword Knight. Get to add back the Chimera Fusion. Set, and then enter to battle directly. And then rip their last card from their hand. Uh, I hope they have a good top deck. Sujinoko into Surrender. Okay, this next game here, I'm playing against Manadium, although they didn't have a great opening hand. Double Thrust, yuck. So, uh, Fusion Armament. I'm going to go grab a Chimera Fusion. Fuse off into a Fusion Burphomet. So, I'm going to send a Mirror Sword Knight. Grab a Master Tau. Add back the Chimera Fusion. Fuse into Illusion Beast. Master Tau, bring back the Sword Knight. Go into Big Wing Burphomet in order to grab myself some more material and a Chimera Fusion. So, no hand rip this time. And they draw a Meek with a Calarium. Oh, boy. So they go for the Ream Heart. Ream Heart pop. Uh, Meek. And then the Field Spell. Revive. And I Chimera Fusion here for a Guardian Chimera. So they're going to get that. I'm going to pop their non-tuner to not trigger the Meek, even though I know they don't have the other one at hand. They called by my Gazelle. That's fine. They thrust into Triple Tack. And then triple tack, take, SP Little Knight, try to target, and I negate with the Mirror Sword Knight, although I don't know why they didn't decide to use the other effect of SP Little Knight on banishing, but okay. So they go SP Little Knight, banish, I add back, and then normal summon a Luber, grab Branded Fusion, Lubellion, shuffle back to make Dragoon just to keep them off of any strong power cards. Set, and then, yep, and back to the opponent. I open, they have a Meek, and then they try to SP again. I imperm the SP so I can get a Mirror Sword Knight back for Fusion Material. Abstention, and yep, Surrender. All right, this game here, you're going to be seeing me play against this weird Flame Swordsman Fire King deck, which is kind of cool and kind of shows uh, what the matchup is like against Fire King. So for some reason, they imperm my Rinbrum, and then they Droll me. So, okay, I got to take the Flame Swordsman out of their hand. That's fine. And they top deck the Ponix. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. And I don't have any interaction. That's fantastic. So they go for the Ponix here. Ponix, go grab Sanctuary, Sanctuary, place Fire King Island. You know the drill. They go for Garunix, Garunix effect. Now, Garunix here sends regular Kieran. Regular Kieran sends Flame Swordsman. And then Flame Swordsman sends Salamandra. Salamandra add Fusion. Okay. I rent Brum back because I don't think I'm going to have the opportunity to later in the game. So, okay. Uh, they go Ponix, add back. I go Chimera Fusion to try to rip one from hand and to do something uh, very cheeky in a little bit here. So, oh boy. Wow, another droll. Uh, this, this is the end of the game. I go for a five material Chimera the Illusion Beast. So, it doesn't destroy, so it's not going to trigger into the Fire King stuff. And I just keep hitting into this Garunix over and over again. Wow. Okay, uh, this game, uh, not a great opening hand, and I do misplay by not immediately using the Fenrir, but hey, we have a Chimera Fusion. And I get drooled. All right, uh, so I go Chimera to rip, try to add the Chimera Fusion back to hand, and uh, there's the Ghost Bell. Oh boy, so they have two cards in hand. So, okay, okay, they go Fire King Island, Fire King Island, pop the Kieran to add Ponix. They trigger a bunch of stuff in the graveyard. I droll so they can't do anything else. They pop my Chimera. Arvada revive Kieran, and wow, that is dangerously close to lethal. That is dangerously close to lethal. Yep. And they go for a Titanic Galaxy. Uh, that's fine. I go for a Fenrir here. Uh, they debear. That's fine. So I tr I'm trying to Forced out the Titanic Galaxy so I can add the Chimera Fusion back to hand to set it. Uh, I forgot about the redirect attack effect. Uh, so I go in, destroy the Ponix. The Grunix revives. Grunix sends Kirin 
and then Kieran sends Fighting Flame Swordsman, and then I send the Fusion, and uh, that's a pretty profitable soul release right there. So I'm going to add that back, set, and then uh, pass turn here. And oh, wow, what a top deck. So they go pop, they go add Ponyx, and I Chimera Fusion here into a Guardian Chimera. So they go Ponyx, I go Guardian Chimera, I get to add. They go Circle to special back. I go Revive Burfamet to add. So, okay, so I get to draw two, pop one of their cards, pop the Fire King Island, so they can't keep doing that again. They go send Kieran, special back the Grunix. They place another Fire King Island, and I'm, I'm dangerously close to dying. But look at my hand, I have six cards in it. I go for Chimera Fusion here, go for Fusion Burfamet, uh, add, and oh, I thought I was being clever here. Uh, but I do not have lethal with Illusion Beast. Uh, I am one material off. So, uh, this Imperm and this Chimera Fusion are gonna have to hard carry me here. And they whiff! They draw a droll. So, I Mirror Sword Knight negate the Ponyx. They go f Fire King Island to go Bambali? Into Almirage? Into Typhon? Huh? Okay. They try to Typhon hit in, but since it's negated, that means that uh, my Illusion Beast can negate that, and then it'll stay negated for the rest of the turn, rather than if they had just had passed if I activated the Imperm. Whoops. All right, this Unchained U-Bell deck is actually pretty cool, but uh, to be honest, I do not have a particularly good hand here. So they go Search, they go Dark Beckoning Beast, Dark Beckoning Beast, Yama. I Imperm the Yama, and so that triple attack in their hand is going to be sitting there, not useful, because I don't have any other hand traps. And uh, so I start with the Fenrir, try to force out the Soul of Rage via combat. They go SP Little Knight. That's fine. I go Branded Opening, go for a Luber. A Luber add Branded Fusion. Try to go Fusion Armament here so I can have my Cornfield Coddle so that way the SP Little Knight can't do anything, interact with any of my stuff, or else get negated. Uh, go for the Burfamet, grab my materials. Uh, I try to go to battle here, but uh, I forgot the fusion armament can't let the fusion attack, so um, that's fine. So I get all of my stuff back, uh, grab a Master Tau, add the fusion, and then I negate with the Coddle, but that's going to trigger the Yama in Graveyard to bring back the Soul of Rage, but that's fine because it already uses effect this turn. I go for a Lubellion, discard the Tau, go into a, a Dragoon, and rip one from their hand, and yep, that's a pretty easy game. Okay, now the Unchained player is going first, and, um, okay, I don't have high hopes with this hand, but let's see what they do. So, okay, they decide to go and grab the Dark Beckoning Beast. They go for Dark Beckoning Beast here to go for the Spirit Gates. Spirit Gates add, they Normal Summon, and then they go for Spirit of Ubel. Spirit of Ubel gets to add Eternal Favorite. They go Nightmare Pain, Nightmare Pain, Pop. And then special out you bell and then they go for a yama yama grab sharvara they go revive and then sharvara pop the spirit of you bell you bell revive the other you bell they go sharvara set a trap card they go apollosa then contract with the gate they're still going a vice king requiem pop the contract go into they, they use machine x pop the trap card Yama effect, revive Sharvara and Shayama, go into High Caesar with five back row. Oh boy. They activate two eternal favorite, which, they, which means they could super poly my entire field. And I evenly matched them. Okay, okay, this is not might not be so bad because High Caesar only negates activations, not effects. So, and I have the called by for the Sharvara, so that's fine. So I activate my second brand infusion. They negate again. And then normal summon gazelle, grab chimera fusion. Let's go. Okay, so I grab all my stuff and I grab my coddle. And I try to be cheeky here, try to go into a fusion burfamet, but I forgot I sided out the master Tau, So uh, I just dump a burfamet and my turn. Uh, that's okay. Oh, they go for another spirit gates. Uh, spirit gates summon dark beckoning beast and. Um, yeah, they can see. <laughs> and that's it for the video. Now, I very much have a personal attachment to this deck. 
Obviously, um, I just played it a ton and I still play it to this day as of the time I'm recording this video. This is really the first deck in Yu-Gi-Oh where I feel like I got good with it. That I just learned all the ins and outs, all the combo lines, and just how to navigate board states and just use all of my resources effectively against some pretty fierce competition in like a lot of my OTS opponents. So anyways guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content like this, uh, click subscribe to Treasure Speeder for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, competitive, casual, all different formats. If you want to see more deck breakdown style videos like this, uh, go to my Patreon and give me a little monthly cat. I do have some ideas for deck videos kind of like this, but I really want to see support from the community to kind of incentivize me to keep doing this more. So anyways, guys, that's it. And, uh, have a good day.